Hello, this is AJ Ragusa from Indiana University's Global Knox Network and Automation and Performance Team. Today, I'm going to be demoing Internet 2's Cloud Connect portal and its integration with Microsoft Azure Express Route. Before we begin in OESS, we have to create our Express Route circuit. I'm going to click Add underneath the Express Route circuits page. This will open the Create Express Route circuits tab. When we do this, we're going to create a new Express Route circuit. We have to give it a name, and then we have to select a provider. In this case, we're going to select the Internet 2 network. Once we select the Internet 2 network, we'll be able to select the peering location. In this case, we're going to use Washington, D.C., and a bandwidth, and I'm going to use 50 megabits per second. Once we're done with that, we have to set up the subscription, the resource group, and the location. The resource group will be created in, well, should be something you've already created before you get to the creating of an Express Route circuit. In my case, I'm going to use US West, and when I'm done, I'm going to click the Create button. Now it takes a few seconds for Microsoft Azure to actually provision our Express Route connection. Now that our Express Route connection has been successfully deployed, we need to go into the Resource Details page and pull out the service key and copy it to our clipboard as we're going to need that inside of OESS. On the Internet 2 Cloud Connect page, I'm going to go and create a new Layer 3 connection. I'm going to label this connection Azure Video Demo, and then I'm going to start adding endpoints. The first endpoint I'm going to add is Microsoft Azure. To do that, I'm going to select By Entity, and then type in Azure in the search. This will pop up the Azure Entity. Once I've done that, I can then select which region I want. In this case, we want Washington, D.C. Once I've done that, I can select some VLANs. In this case, I'm going to select VLAN 30. And then I have to put my service key, which I've copied to my clipboard, into the entity details. Once I'm done, I click the Add Endpoint, and then I have to add the BGB pairings. In this case, I want only IPv4, so I've left the IPv6 checkbox unchecked. Now I need to go and add my second endpoint, which will be Indiana University. Luckily, I've already pre-configured a router at Indiana University. I know all the details, so I'll once I'm done provisioning this inside of OESS, our BGP pairing will automatically establish. Now that I'm done adding all of my endpoints, I can review the details, and if I'm happy with the result, I can hit the Save button, which will start provisioning my circuit. Now that our provisioning has been complete, we're taken to the L3 VPN details page. This page will show us all the details about our L3 VPN, as well as uh, any other information related to our Microsoft Azure connection. So at the details we can see here, we've got a local ASN of 55038. This is important, as that is the ASN that you need to BGP peer with. Uh, we can see the work group that owns it, in this case AJNet, and it was provisioned by A. Ragusa. If we take a look at our endpoints, we'll see that there are three endpoints, even though we only selected two. Microsoft Azure has redundancy included, so we have to provision to two separate endpoints. While we wait for all of our BGP peers to establish, I can show you some other details about OESS, such as the built-in usage graphs that will show the per interface, as well as the individual BGP pairing details. We can change the time, zone, time scales on these. We also have built-in router proxies. So for example, we can run the show version command on any of the switches involved with this L3 VPN. The results obviously show up just as they would on the CLI. This is there to help you attempt to debug any problems with your L3 VPN. Going back to the details section, we'll see that our graph has now updated. We can see that there are some net routes now in our route table. This means that some of our BGP peers have established, perhaps all. To see if they've established, we will have to reload this page, 
and then we'll take a look at our endpoints to see which ones have or haven't established. As we scroll down, we can see that the two Microsoft Azure peerings are active. However, the peering to Indiana University is currently down. We just need to wait a second for that BGP peer to still establish. We'll be able to tell if the BGP session establishes based on this graph of the routing table. We can see that this peering went from two to three routes. That means that we must have a new BGP session enabled. When we refresh the page, sure enough, we can see that the Indiana University endpoint now has its BGP session established. That completes the demo of how to use the Microsoft Azure Express Route circuit inside of Internet 2's Cloud Connect portal. If you have any questions, please email us at knock at net.internet2.edu.